NBA free agency started today and teams wasted no time jumping right in and spending all of the money that they possibly could in just six hours, 12 hours, half a day at most, uh, over a billion dollars had already been spent in new contracts for players. There were a lot of good moves. There was a lot of baffling moves. Um, and then there was a lot of stuff that was just okay. So I just wanted to hop on for a minute and run through some of the things that stood out the most to me, which means we got to start with Lonzo Ball going to the Chicago Bulls. Uh, in a signing trade with the Pelicans, he gets a four-year deal. The Bulls get a, a true point guard that they can lean on for a lot more of the playmaking for them. Uh, Kobe White has been pretty inconsistent at the playmaking portion. He's a good scorer when he gets streaky. Uh, Zach Levine's not really a primary ball handler either. So bringing in Lonzo, someone who doesn't necessarily need to score to impact and, and affect a game, is going to be huge for that offense. I think the pick and rolls with him and Vukovic are going to be really fun to watch as well. I know that Zach Levine is still waiting on a new deal as well. So, you know, that'll be interesting to watch. But I think Lonzo, too, also um, raises the floor of that team's defense. And Chicago was a team that was in a lot of close games last year. Like, they were a fringe playoff team. That's why they went in all in at the deadline, got Vucevic, and, you know, ended up just kind of falling apart near the end. And there was a lot of close games there where stronger defense from a guard would have probably helped make a difference. So to see them go in and address that need is huge. And on the other side of that sign-in trade, what the hell are the Pelicans doing? Like, is there a plan over there? Or is the plan specifically to try to drive Zion Williamson away? So both Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson said that they wanted Lonzo to stay with the organization, that they liked playing with him. And instead... <laughs> The Bulls send them Garrett Temple, Thomas Sadoransky, and a 2022 second round pick for Lonzo Ball. Um, that's a huge downgrade. That pick is probably going to be a nothing. Um, and so the Pelicans then tried to address that later. They went out and traded with Charlotte in a sign and trade and gave Devontae Graham four years, $47 million. And all they had to send back was a first round pick so it just feels like everything that the pelicans are doing is reactionary and there's no plan in place and with rumors already going that zion is upset and not happy there and that his family is already in his ear like we got to get out of new orleans this sucks it's just not <laughs> off to a good start like i feel bad for pelicans fans because you know you don't want that third transcendent player to go off somewhere and prosper elsewhere. It was Chris Paul, it was Anthony Davis, and now history could repeat itself a again a third time. And Zion Williamson, you know, could get fed up and be like, okay, I'm out. And Devontae Graham is a very good player. He's a very good shooter. He had a bit of a down year last year, um, which is a bummer in a career year, in our contract year, of course. Um I like him a lot. I'm glad he got his money, and I think, you know, the the bigger role in the offense will be a benefit to him. But, like, he's not a natural playmaker. Like, they, maybe, if anything, this helps with Point Zion because uh, catch and shoot is something that Devontae will help a ton if they're, you know, set on running the offense through Zion. But this has, like, quickly just become a, a make-or-break season for the Pelicans and this first day of free agency does nothing to quell that and to silence that <laughs> that um that noise that's coming about the team uh the other big movers of the day were the Miami Heat who seemed to kind of just be involved in a little bit of everything uh they had arguably the biggest move of the day the sign and trade to get Kyle Lowry where Jimmy Butler has long wanted to play with him. Lowry, they've wanted to play together. Uh, three years, about $90 million for Kyle. We don't know yet what Toronto is getting in return. There's rumors that it's going to include Precious Achua and Goran Dragic, but we haven't gotten the full report yet. But that wasn't the only thing the Heat did. The Heat opened the checkbooks today. 
they signed or they announced plans to sign Jimmy Butler to a four year max deal um, extension. And they gave Duncan Robinson a five year, $90 million contract extension, which is the highest ever for an undrafted player. And it's awesome. I think he's earned every cent of it with how well he's played since he's joined the main roster uh, from from the G League. Like his story is so crazy. <laughs> and one thing I want to shout out to is Duncan's agent or whoever told Woj because Woj included the the at for Duncan's podcast, The Long Shot, and like that's a that that's a a big win to have Woj drop a Woj bomb that has the link to the podcast in it. Like what a what a day for Duncan. Um, another team that sorry I got like notes and stuff here. Another team that did a lot of good things is the Phoenix Suns. They bring back Chris Paul, uh, which might be a little bit of an overpay. He gets four years, one hundred and twenty million, um, and they get Javale McGee for one year, five million. And Javale McGee is a really smart signing for them. Because their biggest glaring weakness in the finals just a couple weeks ago was the fact that they didn't have a center that they could trust behind Aiton. Once Saric went down and they lost the advantage of being able to go really small with Saric at the five, they kind of just fell apart. And it seems like that's when Milwaukee took over. If Aiton got in foul trouble, it was a wrap. So McGee, you know, at least gives you that that flexibility that you want your defense to maintain. Like he knows how to rebound. He's a smart player on the court. He's really reshaped and rehabbed his, his image and his career. And he's a multiple champion, a multiple time champion. So adding that depth for that type of a bargain is a really strong deal. And then similarly, Chris Paul, you just, you had to keep after seeing what that team was able to accomplish with him. Uh, hopefully, you know, they avoid injuries, stay mostly healthy, and can come back and make another run of it in what's going to surely be a much more competitive, hopefully less injury-filled Western Conference. Um, another team, too, that I'm not quite sure how to take what they're doing is the Portland Trailblazers. So they re-signed Norman Powell, which was essential after giving up Gary Harris for him. Then they went out and they got Cody Zeller, who, you know, is a good backup big to Nurkic, but, like, he's no Mason Plumley. <laughs> like, if you want a, a comparison, like, someone like that that can really, you know, take over playmaking, and that's, you know, he would work well behind Nurkic because he does a lot of the same things that Nurkic can do. Uh, so Cody Zeller is going to be an interesting one to see. It probably means that they are going to uh, part ways with Enos Cantor. And signing Powell is smart. It keeps that um, that wing defense, even though they do sacrifice some size if they try to run that, that lineup with Dame, CJ, and Norman. On the flip side of that, too, the Raptors re-signed Gary Trent. And he was on a pretty team-friendly deal, three years. And we don't know what they're getting back yet from Miami. If they're able to add a uh, precious Achua and then a veteran point guard like Dragic, that could be a quick retool like for... For Toronto, that gets them right back into into the hunt in the East, and you know, put that with Scotty Barnes, who they took fourth, who you know supposedly has the potential to be the best defender from this last draft, and they could be setting themselves up very nicely here. It could be you know a quick, quick rebuild. Uh, moving on from Lowry's got to be tough because of what he's meant to the franchise and the city these years, but. You know, it, it was time. It was it was time to kind of retool things. So I'll be interested to see, you know, what they actually do finally end up getting. And another team that I really don't quite understand what they are doing or why they're doing it is the Spurs. So the Spurs started turning heads for the wrong reasons uh, in the NBA draft when they took Josh Primo, 12th, who is projected to be like a fringe second round pick. Uh, he was the youngest player in the draft at just, just like a tick over 18. And now, today in free agency, they signed Zach Collins, who has had terrible injury luck at the last couple of years. We have not seen play much of all. And they signed Doug McDermott. So that's a good, the, you know, the add of the shooter, that's good. Uh, they're a little crowded at guard, especially if they're going to try to now start finding minutes for Primo. 
And then Zach Collins, you know, he'll fit well into that Spurs system. He's a high energy player if he can be healthy. And that's a huge if, unfortunately, because of just how unlucky he's been. Um, I have here in my notes, too, another winner here, if you will, is me. Because the Lakers just dipped back into the time machine and said, let's go get all the Lakers of yesteryear. In like a 30-minute span, <laughs> they announced Trevor Ariza, Wayne Ellington Jr., Kent Bazemore, and Dwight Howard are all coming back to Los Angeles on pretty nice one-year deals. This is exactly what we kind of figured the Lakers would do after they landed Westbrook on draft day, where you know you want to get those players that are older, you want to get the the vet minimum guys that are chasing the chasing the rings. And you got to just hope that age and, and health can sustain for a long run. I love it. Ariza, Trevor Ariza was one of my favorite Lakers on his original stint with the team. I had the jersey. I was all in. I was devastated when he left. So to see him come back now, you know, is just a really cool moment. I'll be curious to, you know, see how he fits in next to LeBron. Like, that's going to be an interesting um defense to to watch on the wings to say the least and the other hard part for the lakers though is is they lost alex caruso who you know everyone seemed to think the team was going to push to re-sign uh he ends up going to chicago who just fortified their strong day get bringing another kind of like defensive minded energy effort guy Four years, $38 million. And I know the Lakers probably couldn't um, match that even if they wanted to. But it still kind of hurt to see the report that said they didn't even try. There was no counter offer, There was no anything. They just said, oh, get, get your money, buddy. That means that was going to be a low offer, I bet you. Um, so I'm happy for Caruso. He leaves a champion, the bald mamba. Someone said there's a Michael Jordan's the second greatest bull of all time now. Um Really, I just hope Chicago fans take care of him because he is going to be great for that team. And I can't wait to see, you know, what he looks like, maybe with an even bigger role than what he had here in L.A. And the last team I want to talk about really is the Knicks because I don't quite understand what the Knicks are doing. Um, (laughs) They turned a lot of heads, proved a lot of people wrong with their playoff run last year. Uh, But now here we are. First day of free agency, they signed Evan Fournier to a four-year, $78 million deal, which has to have Celtics fans elated because they didn't give him that money. Uh, It's probably just a little bit over what Fournier would have been making anyways on his current deal, but like, you don't want to be the team that gives him that (laughs) because he's so inconsistent with his play. So they're, you know, kind of felt like, oh, Knicks will be Knicks again, and they do bring back Derrick Rose as well who gets a four-year deal after some rumors that Chicago was looking to bring him home. So it'll be interesting to see because Derrick Rose was absolutely in the playoffs, like the key player for them. He really, really pushed and carried them as much as he could. So, you know, Tibbs loves him. So it's not a surprise that they would be, you know, rewarding him with this deal and bringing him back. It just kind of feels like, like a Nixian move. Like, that's the only thing is like, these are the type of moves that the Knicks get burned for. So it's going to be really interesting to see if they can, uh, you know, reverse the uh, reverse the curse. And then the last thing, we have a bunch of players that still we're waiting to see what happens, like huge names. So Kawhi Leonard, DeMar DeRozan, Dennis Schroeder, who really fumbled the bag, Carmelo Anthony, John Collins uh, is expected to get a lot more interest than from just the Hawks, apparently, according to Shams. Uh, Victor Oladipo, another one, fumbled the bag tremendously, and it sucks. Patty Mills, Josh Hart, Andre Iguodala, some of these veteran guys, Lou Williams, Danny Green, uh, J.J. Redick. There's reports that Spencer Dinwiddie is close to leaving Brooklyn and going to Washington which would bolster Washington a lot at starting point guard and would also really be a loss to the Nets. Now they have Kyrie and KD and James Harden and a ton of other guards that are veterans that they can play. But Dinwiddie is a pretty solid starter, which makes him a pretty great 
luxury to have at sixth man. So not having him there is going to be uh, an adjustment, I think, for the Nets, especially if they have those types of injury issues again. So good on him. He'll probably definitely get a much larger role in Washington or anywhere else he may end up than he would in Brooklyn, of course. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see what he does with that. And I think that's everything I wanted to hit. We'll see, you know, this is just the first day. All sorts of rumors still going around on veterans and those, like, who's going to go where. Uh, let me know your thoughts on free agency as well, what your team did that you liked or didn't like. And uh, keep it here. I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.